Hi everybody, Jeff here. Just a, another update on the Range Rover Classic Litchfield Edition. And I have the engine out, as you can see. There's the TVR rocker covers and a quick look around the engine. Yeah, it was, it was a bit oily and grungy, which is not surprising because it's, you know, it's a 1991, I believe. Um, so, the engine took quite a bit of getting out. It was actually a very frustrating job. Um, there's a torque converter. And inside, we now have an engine bay <laughs> with just for transmission in there, which, and that'll be out tomorrow. And I'll do an update tomorrow as well when this comes out. Hopefully it's nowhere near as bad as getting the engine out. Uh, it's all these bell housing bolts. They were a pain to get at. You really do have to um, take out the engine mounts, lower the engine down, and you have a little bit more room on the firewall to get wrenches and sockets and things in there. It's still a pain to get into. And um, there's a couple of hidden ones. And one of them was what, uh, I think it was this one here. Uh, this one here, I couldn't see. Uh, I had another look. And there was, uh, and they're hard to get at. These were fairly easy. These two here are fairly hard because they're so close to the firewall. So anyway, eventually got it out. Now, you can see the extent of the rust in here now. This is why I'm switching uh, the engines out into another body. This is totally rotted away around the corners. Um, could be repaired. But when you start looking at the inner wings, inner fenders, there's an extensive amount of rot everywhere. <laughs> Typical. And even on the other side. I've shown this before, but I'll just show it again. You just see how rotted through these inner wings are. It's terrible. I now have this fender off wing. To me, which continent or country you're in. You can just see all the rust. It's terrible. <laughs> it's totally rotted through. Um, I really don't have time to do this. So, uh, I do have another body. Um, and another engine. Um, the other Range Rover is just got its standard, I think it's a 4.2 in there. Um, it's the same year as this. And I'm going to be doing, uh, but the transmission is shot in that one, the other one. And this transmission is, is good. And also, if you watch me over videos, I've actually replaced the differentials as well, front and back on this one. So they'll be following the other car over. So this is just a short video showing what I got up to with the engine out. Uh, you can see, like, I rebuilt the calipers, new brake lines are in here. Uh, they'll be going to be coming off and going onto the other car. So the idea is, now that I'm semi-retired, forced to semi-retire from losing my job at the university due to cutbacks and the coronavirus, um, I'm now drawing a limited pension uh, for my age. So I'm planning on restoring this car up and it will be sold. Now my question is, uh, due to the pain this was taking this engine out, do I lift the body off the frame on the other car and totally um, refurbish, repaint, de-rust um, the chassis while I'm there and sort out some of the minor welding that other body needs underneath. And it is very minor. Or do I do the same as I've done now, just take the engine out and switch it over? I'm leaning towards taking the, the body off the chassis and redoing it. I, I have a lot more time now, unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever you look at it. Um, so that's my next project, is to get this one, get the transmission out. Um, later, I'll be taking out the uh, propeller shafts, front and back. Um, there's a, a big 
um, cross member underneath, uh, which I'll be unbolting. Um, it's a big unit, this transmission. Um, I'm going to be supporting this part with my engine hoist. Um, and then uh, on the back, I'll put a couple of jacks underneath and lower it to the ground and uh, just get it on the floor. Once that's on the floor, um, I'm going to be ripping the interior out. Um, let's just walk around here. Um, taking this door off. If you never take one of these doors off before, it's very simple. Um, just feed your electricals through through here. And there's a couple of C-clips and go on the top, top and bottom, here and here. Just clip those off and the door just lifts off. It's five minutes. It's easy. Less than five minutes. It's very, very easy. Now I know how to do that. So I'm going to be taking the seat out uh, because the computer is under the seat. Um, and I'll be gutting the interior. This interior, oh, between the two cars, I can make a really nice interior. Um, I've got a really good passenger seat on this side. Uh, rear seats are wonderful as well. The headlining in this is for a Range Rover, it's very solid and good. It's almost like new. Uh, so that will be following over onto the other car because the other one's typical. It's sagging, uh, which is typical Range Rover for any year. So that's going to be there. This roof is going to be following me over. Um, and also, um, if I can unbolt the roof, this whole roof may be following it over as well. The one's got a slight amount of hail damage on top, but this one's got no damage at all. So that's uh, something else to consider. So that's where I'm at today. Uh, Thursday, March 26. Coming together slowly. And you can see the, uh, the XK8 in the background. Hopefully we're going to get some nice weather soon to get that out on the road and drive that one around. Get an antsy to drive that. So, um, that's it for now. This is an update. Um, keep watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll be showing more videos as I'm pulling the, uh, this apart and rolling it out of a shop and bringing the other car in. Anyway, thanks for watching. Talk to you again soon. Bye for now.